dear students welcome back in the previous lecture we had seen the exact ordinary differential equation first order this was a third type of differential equation that we have encountered for which we can write down a closed form solution today we will see um, the remaining three types of uh, first order ODEs which can be for which closed form solutions can be found okay so let's start with the fourth type which is the linear first order ODE we have already seen the definition of a linear ODE in the general case right what did we say we said a linear ODE is of the form ly equal to fx right or in other words uh, a linear ODE is of the form summation i 0 to n okay so if it's an nth order differential equation then a linear ODE is of the form y kth derivative of x so this so for uh, k equal to n it's the n nth order uh, derivative of y and for k and for k uh, sorry uh, sorry i should write or maybe i'll change i'll make this k and i'll take this i to be k okay so this if an od is of this form then it's called linear that's what we have seen already right we have already seen that a linear od is of this form so in the case of first order what what happens in the case of first order it's k equal to 0 to 1 a k x y power k x is equal to f of x so a linear first order ode is of this form and this if you expand is precisely a1 x y prime of x plus a0 of x y 0 derivative is just y of x equal to f of x okay so this is the first order linear ODE okay so we have already seen the definition of linear ODE so in this uh, part we are going to show that a linear first order ODE uh, will admit a closed form solution so this first order ODE is what I have written here by replacing the coefficients a1 by p and a0 by q and this f by r okay it's just another notation okay for so that i don't have i can avoid these subscripts now by definition of uh, a first order linear od you already know that this leading coefficient of the higher order derivative in so in this case the derivative of y this has to be this has to be non-zero right when i say non-zero it cannot be the constant function zero okay so similarly in, in we which because if a1 is zero then it's no longer a first order ode right what remains is just this so for a first order ode you have pxy pxy prime qxy rx where p is the non-zero function okay so just just recalled so we have just recalled the definition of linear od in the case of first order okay so a linear first order od can be written in the differential form in the following way right what is your m here your mxy is this where mxy is this one qxy minus rx 
and your p is your nxy so in this case this nxy is independent of the y variable okay so this is your m so this is the differential form of a linear first order ode now we have already seen in the previous lecture there is a necessary and sufficient condition for uh, exactness so if a linear od so first question is is a linear od exact okay not always let's see because the necessary condition for exactness is that my should be equal to nx right and in this case my what is the y derivative of this okay so the y derivative of this if there is a y here there is no y here so it's qx okay is the y derivative of this that should be equal to the x that should be equal to the x derivative of n what is n n is p so p prime x so a linear first order ode will be exact if and only if the q is p right so this q is p prime okay so you see if this q is p prime what happens is that linear ode becomes px y prime q becomes p prime is equal to rx but this you see is precisely px y the whole prime right which is rx now you can solve this like a p is given so you just have the derivative you so you integrate both sides what you get is integral this derivative will go right so you will have px plus some con some constant whatever and you divide by p so you have solved for y right so in the case of exact yeah, so in the case when this linear od is exact you can solve it like we have done or, or, the, or the way we have done before so when is it exact not always so if this q is the derivative of the leading coefficient then it's an exact od otherwise it's not exact so in general a linear first order od can be non-exact so whatever i have discussed what i'm saying here so a linear od is exact if and only if q is p prime and in that case the ODE becomes px y prime equal to rx which is already in the separable form and you can solve the separable ODE okay now in general this need not happen right so in that case what do you do so in that case this is the theorem which tells you for a general so here I have uh, made the p equal to 1 that is the coefficient px um, we have made it equal to 1 because p is non-zero as we have already assumed for a first order od it has to be the leading coefficient has to be non-zero so what you do you just divide by p throughout so in in your original pde you will get q over p y that is y prime plus q over p is equal to is equal to r over p so this q over p is my new q and this r over p is my new r so i can rewrite any pd of any pd of this form after dividing by p and calling the new coefficients as q and r okay that's what we have done here so the linear ode as the integrating factor mu and in an integrating factor is something which you have already seen right integrating factor is something if you are given a non-exact ODE and sometimes it's possible to find an integrating factor such that the non-exact ODE can be converted to an exact ODE by multiplying the integrating factor right so this theorem tells you that in general uh, in general your uh, linear ODE which may not be exact has an integrating factor exponential of integral of q and it has this solution okay so here if you actually see 
e and so this exponential here exponential of integral of q is precisely mu x mu x y but in this case there is no dependence on x so it's actually so this mu x y is actually a function of x so it's just mu x right and this is 1 over mu x that is mu inverse of x i mean when i say inverse i mean the 1 1 over mu x okay that i mean the reciprocal of mu so this is the theorem so let's look at the theorem so the theorem states for this ode there is an integrating factor which which is a function of x only and the family of solution is this so how do you uh, show this so you write the differential uh, equation uh, um, in the differential form so we have already seen that this linear od has this differential form right qx qx yx minus rx dx and dy because we have taken p to be 1 okay now this is exact if and only if q equal to 0 right why because uh, we have already seen this is exact if q is equal to p prime but in this case p is 1 so p prime is uh, 0 so q has to be 0 for this to be exact okay but if q is 0 you can anyway solve it right so if q is 0 you already know what is the solution if q is 0 the, the od that you have is y prime is equal to rx so your y is integral of rx plus c and that's what you have because if q is 0 this is exponential of 0 which is uh, 1 and you have exponential of 0 here which is 1 so you precisely have this formula so if, we, if it's uh, exact the theorem is true now if q is non-zero right if q is non-zero then it's no longer exact then you look at the d what did we say d was if you recall dxy was my minus nx and my in this case is q and nx in this case is 0 so it's just q so dxy is q so you look at so if q is non-zero this od is non-exact so you look at d which is q which is non-zero right and now it's a function of x so now you look at d over n since n is 1 right n is 1 n is 1 so d over n is q which depends on d on x so there is a theorem that we stated in the previous lecture that if d over m n is depending only on x then you know what is the integrating factor it's exponential of integral d over n which is and d over n is q here so by that theorem that we showed in the previous lecture on integrating factor for non-exact ODEs, you have mu x is integral mu x is exponential of integral q which depends only on x right so once you have this integrating factor what you do you multiply this ODE, you multiply this ODE with integrating factor, right? That's the idea of integrating factor. So what do you get? Mu x y prime mu x q x y x and mu x. rx okay and you know what is mu it is exponential of integral of q right so uh, what you know is that what is the derivative of mu prime so what is oh, sorry what is the derivative of mu so what is mu prime mu prime is equal to the derivative of this what is the derivative of this exponential of something right will give you exponential of that same something is integral over q and then derivative of the 
exponent. Derivative of the exponent is q. So what is this? So the derivative, so the derivative of mu is nothing but mu times q. And that is what precisely you have here. So this is mu prime of x. So what you have, this od now becomes mu y whole prime equal to mu x rx. So this od has become this after multiplying by integrating factor. Right? So that's what I have said. So with this choice of mu, the linear od becomes this. So you have mu y prime. Now if you integrate, if you integrate both sides, you are going to get this family of solution. Okay. So for a linear first order od, also you have a closed form solution and that solution is given by this. So you can compute the solution unknown y using the coefficients q and r. And you have a family of solution indexed by c. Okay, so you have the family of solutions as given in the statement. Okay, now let's look at some examples. Now, this is a linear OD, right? This is your q. This is your r. Right, so you have a linear OD. So the integrating factor of this linear OD is exponential of integral of Q. So Q is this, right? So if you integrate this and, it, and what you get is exponential of 2x plus log x, right? Log mod x, okay? So that is your integrating factor mu. So you see there is one special situation i mean the special situation for the linear linear uh, od od is that the integrating factor is only a function of x variable so it's not x and y though in general the definition of integrating factor is was was a function of x and y variable in this special situation the integrating factor is always a function of x for a linear first order od okay so remember that Okay, so now you have integrated, we have obtained what is uh, mu. Now you use this mu, so you multiply this mu in this OD here, so you will get a exact equation. So, so this is your mu. So if you multiply, your OD becomes this. So you multiplied e x e power 2 x, okay, which is the integrating factor. So you get this. Now this will reduce as we are given in the proof will become an OD of this form which when integrated you have this family of solution indexed by C. Okay. So you have solved. You have solved a linear OD. Okay. Now let's look at an example which is an initial value problem. You have an OD in addition you have an initial condition. You do the same thing. This is a linear OD. It's y prime plus q equal to r. This is r. This is qx, right? This is rx. And the value of y uh, is 1 at x equal to 2. So what is your integrating factor? Your q is given. So you exponential of integral of q, you integrate it, you get the integrating factor x plus, uh, sorry, x squared plus 1 whole square. Use that integrating factor in this OD here, multiply both sides. You are going to get an OD of this form. This you can now integrate. You will get a family of solutions, which is this indexed by C after, after integration. Now you are given an initial condition here, use that initial condition, put x equal to 2 wherever you have. So here you have 2 power 4 over 4, 2 square over 2, right? So this is actually 4 by 2, this is 2, 
this is uh, 16 by 4 which is 4 4 plus 2 6 okay and here again you have uh, uh, 5 square 25 so 25 and y is 1 so 25 minus 6 should be uh, 19 so she uh, C, C should be 19, C, yeah, C is 19, so the solution is this, okay, so you have solved an initial value problem as well, okay, easy, so you know how to solve a linear first order ODE. Now, this is a different uh, situation, I mean, a special case, something, so look at this ODE, so, of course, you can see here that uh, uh, this ODE has a y square here, okay, so it cannot be, it's not a linear. So in fact, if you go and check in this example, this, uh, this does not fall in any category that we have seen so far. So, what are the categories that we have seen so far? The first one we saw was separable. This is not separable. And then we saw homogeneous ODE. This is not homogeneous. And then we saw exact ODE, this is not exact. And then finally, now in the beginning of this lecture, we saw a linear ODE, and this is not linear as well because there's an x squared here. So this ODE does not fall into any of the type that we have seen so far, right? But a little uh, trick will work, uh, will bring this back to the one of the form that we have seen, that is. So what you do, you you now interchange the variable. Okay. So what you have here is uh, dy by dx equal to y square one minus three x square. Okay. Now in the differential form, this becomes in the differential form. This becomes let's say y square dx minus 1 minus 3x square dy equal to 0. This is the differential form of this ODE, right? Now, we have, I have already mentioned in the, when we did the differential, so the total differential form of the ODE, that in the total differential form, see in this case, this is seen as the x derivative of the function y, whereas in differential form, uh, you see them independently, so you can interchange the role, right? So now what I do is that we see this. Uh, so using this differential form, we go back and write it as uh, the y derivative of here. So now we see x as the in uh, x as the dependent variable and y as the independent variable, and see x as a function of y. Okay, and you look at rewrite this OD in that form. So what you get is uh, 1 minus 3xy by y square. So the same ODE, we have interchanged the role of x and y, right? In when I say interchanged, uh, I didn't interchange the role of x and y. We have uh, interchanged then uh, whichever is uh, dependent, we have made it independent. Whichever was independent, we have made it dependent variable, that's right? And that we give, uh, so that uh, uh, we makes sense in the via so going via the differential form okay so now this is an ODE now in this case the prime depends uh, sorry this so this prime that is given here okay this prime notation here denotes the derivative with respect to the y variable okay whereas here the derivative was with respect to the x variable okay but fine so there is an ODE here now this ODE if you notice is linear in the x variable in the unknown x okay it's a linear function so it's a linear first order od so this od which was not in any of the form just by looking at in a different way we see it as a linear od in the x variable okay so now you know how to solve a linear first order od so employ that technique so so the justification, as I said, is coming from the differential form of the ODE, the justification of interchange of x and y variable. So now this is a linear ODE. So you use the Q there. So the Q here is 3 by 
uh, y because here the now the independent variable is y so your q is 3 by y so you have the integrating factor to be y cube multiply y cube okay so you get this ode for the for the unknown x okay so this prime is now so this prime is now d by uh, dy right d by dy this prime is now d by dy so you solve this uh, ODE, integrate both sides, you get this family of solution and that is the solution of this and hence since it's always solution of this. It's that family of solution. Okay. So sometimes uh, by interchange the road, you can actually solve the uh, ODE as well. So this is one technique. Okay. Now let's look at the uh, we have seen four types this is the fifth type so let's look at the fifth type of ODE which is the Bernoulli differential equation what is the Bernoulli differential equation see it looks like a linear ODE but now what is extra is this y so this is a non-linear term now so it's a y power alpha where alpha is a fixed real number whatever real number so it's some given number y is unknown but alpha is known q is known r is known okay Whenever you have an OD of this form, it is called a Bernoulli differential equation. So the linear first order OD is a special case of Bernoulli differential equation. If you put alpha equal to 0 or alpha equal to 1, then the Bernoulli equation is actually a linear first order uh, differential equation, right? Because when you put alpha equal to 0, y power 0 is 1, so this is a linear equation. When you put alpha equal to 1, q minus r is your new q your od is of this form so q minus r is your new q so this is a linear uh, od so bernoulli equation so this linear equation is a special form of bernoulli equation so bernoulli equation you can see in a sense uh, much more general than linear equation okay so here but for other alpha it's a different it's a non-linear equation and its type is and it so it's a Bernoulli equation of exponent alpha order. okay so for other values of alpha the Bernoulli equation can be transformed to a linear equation that can be done so for 0 and 1 it's already linear for other real values of alpha the Bernoulli equation can be transformed to linear equation and how do you do that this is the theorem that tells you how to do it so if alpha is not 0 and 1 right because that is anyway linear case if alpha is not 0 and 1 then use this transformation set y1 minus alpha and that will reduce the Bernoulli equation to a linear equation in z and x variable right x is already the uh, independent variable y was a dependent variable now you are replaced this dependent variable by the new dependent variable z so now you will get a new differential equation in z and x variable and that will be a linear equation first order and that is something you already know how to solve. So let's give a proof of this theorem. So what do you do? You already see that you have y power alpha here. So you divide by y power alpha throughout. So what do you get? You get y minus alpha y prime y minus alpha qx 1 minus alpha because there's a y here and then rx right once you divide by y power alpha this is a new od that you will get okay and this and and the theorem tells you mark this as your z y1 minus alpha right y1 minus alpha should be your z so you divide by y by alpha you will get this ODE and make this your z variable so if that is your z variable then your z prime is 1 minus alpha y minus alpha y prime and so y minus alpha y prime here is nothing but z prime by 1 over alpha so replace this by z prime by 1 over alpha uh, sorry by 1 over 1 minus alpha 
and bring the 1 minus alpha here, here, okay, basically multiply by 1 minus alpha throughout, you will get this OD. Now this, if you see, is a linear OD where you, where this is your new Q, this is your new R. And this you know how to solve. So go ahead and solve it. Okay. If you go ahead and solve it, you know you have solved the Bernoulli equation. So let's look at an example. So you see this is a Bernoulli equation because the alpha is 3. Okay. So what do you do? You will you do z equal to y 1 minus 3 which is y power minus 2. So you use this transformation z equal to 1 over y square. In other words, what we do, you divide this uh, ODE by y cube, right, throughout both sides, you divide by y cube. So if you divide by y cube, what you get is this. Now call this what you have here as your z, that's what we said, right. And if this is your z, you will get a relation here. So your, if your z is y minus, your z uh, prime is this and your ODE becomes this. This is a linear ODE, right? So to solve this, what is your Q here? Your Q is minus 2, you, you in uh, exponential of integral of minus 2, which is going to give you e power minus 2x, which is the integrating factor. Multiply the integrating factor in this ODE both sides, okay? You will get a OD of this form, which if you solve, if you integrate, you are going to get the solution of um, the family of solutions for the z and x differential equation. Now you use this information again to write it in terms of y and x. So you will have a family of solution in y and x, which means you have solved the Bernoulli equation. So any Bernoulli equation can be converted into a linear ODE and you can solve it. And how do you do the conversion? Just divide by that y power alpha that is appearing in the Bernoulli equation and do the change of variable and, and so do the chan uh, yeah, so you do the transformation uh, z equal to y power 1 minus alpha. Okay. Okay. Now this Bernoulli equation is actually a very special case. I mean, you, you can even generalize the idea used in Bernoulli equation to a more general situation where your OD is of this form. That is the coefficient of y prime is the derivative of the nonlinearity which, which, which is appearing with Q. Okay. So if you whatever is the function of y which is appearing with Q, if the coefficient of y prime is the derivative of that, okay, then you can um, so then you can employ the same method. This is and the Bernoulli situation is a special case when your g is y power one minus alpha, right? That's what was happening there, right? So in these situations, which sorry. <coughs> Yeah, in these situations, yeah, in this Bernoulli equation situations, you have y power 1 minus alpha here, right? So, this is a special case when you have y power minus 1 minus alpha, whatever appearing here, its derivative is the coefficient of y prime here. Because if you see here, this one. This one, this is your g y, then this is your g prime y. So for the special choice of g to be this y power 1 minus for this function, Bernoulli equation is the special case. In general, whatever uh, technique we use for Bernoulli equation, we could have used 
if you have any function of y here, let's call it g, then and the coefficient of y prime should be its derivative. Whenever that happens, the same technique that you used for Bernoulli equation can be used there as well. So the special case that we are saying is this. So if you have an OD of this form, then you do this transformation z equal to gy, you get z prime with g prime y prime, then the OD gets transformed to a linear OD, which you can solve using integrating factors. Okay. Okay, so now let's do an example and for that for that special type of uh, ODE. So look at this ODE. So here I should actually use a bracket. So it's cos y of y prime sin y over x equal to 1. So in this case you see this is your qx, this is your gy and the coefficient of y prime is the derivative of gy which is g prime y. So it's in this form. So in this case, what do you do? You use this change of it, z equal to gy, which is which means z equal to sine y. So use uh, z equal to sine y, you will get a linear ODE. Now linear ODE, you will find the integrating factor, which is in this case mod x because q is 1 over x. So you have uh, mu x equal to mod x uh, and then for x for the positive uh, if the domain is in the, on the positive real axis then you have this family of solution okay so you have solved for that problem okay now let's look at the last type of uh, uh, differential equation which is a differential equation where your coefficients are one degree polynomial basically if you look at your y prime if you remember a first order od y prime is of this form so here in this case your f x y is a quotient right your f x y is a quotient as a 1 1 x a12 x b1 doesn't matter with a minus and let's say a21 x a22 i plus b2 so this is how your od looks like so y prime equal to f where f is of this form this is one degree polynomial coefficient so all so this is uh, sorry this is uh, this is y so this is you see this is a uh, one degree polynomial in two variables both the numerator and denominator of that form so od of this form in so in the so in the differential form this is how it will look like so this is the last type of od that we will see where we can obtain closed form solutions okay so this is a theorem if you notice the theorem which is going to tell you how to solve this type of od so what is the theorem stating Theorem is stating that if you have an OD of this form where these constants are given, right? All these are coefficients, these constants are given. Okay. And if you form this matrix using of A, so your A is the 2 cross 2 matrix A11, A12, A21, A22. So the first row is the coefficients of x and y appearing in for the as I mean appearing the coefficient of dx and the second row is those appearing in the coefficient of dy okay that is your matrix a which is a 2 cross 2 matrix so whenever you have an od of this form you always have a matrix of this form right 2 cross 2 matrix of this form now, if this A matrix that you have written down is invertible, if its A is invertible, then you can define, then you can find a HK, which is A inverse of B1, B2. B1, B2 are these, right? A1, A2, A11, A12, A21, A22, we have used in the matrix, right? 
So HK is, and if the matrix is invertible, A inverse of B1, B2 is HK. Basically, HK is that element whose image under A is B1, B2, which is given in the coefficients. So if A is invertible, you can find H, since A is since A since A is known, B1, B2 is known. You can find HK. Okay. If you find HK, then you use this transformation W and Z, right? So you have found HK. So in the so you translate by H in the x coordinate, and you translate by K in the y coordinate, and call that as your new variable WZ. Okay, and use this transformation. Then you rewrite this ODE using that transformation in W and Z. You will get a homogeneous ODE in W and Z variable. And you know how to solve a homogeneous ODE. We have already seen it in, in some two lectures back, right? So you know already. So you know how to solve a homogeneous ODE. So since we have transformed this to a homogeneous ODE. We solve this and hence we can solve this. Now this is under the assumption that A is invertible. Suppose A is not invertible. Suppose if A is not invertible, then again you can do something. If A is not invertible, you use this transformation. Z, you only use one transformation. That is take this and use that as your Z variable. Okay. So then you will get a ODE in Z and X variable which will be separable. And separable OD is something which you know how to solve. So hence you have solved this OD. So whenever you have an OD with coefficients as one degree polynomials, then you write down this matrix A, see if it's invertible or not invertible. Accordingly, you you can solve. Okay, we will understand this via examples. So let's take this example. So in this case, you see this is a uh, ODE uh, which is whose coefficients are one degree two variable one degree polynomial okay so now what is the A here right what is the A here the A is 1 minus 2 and 4 minus 3 okay so we have to see whether this matrix is invertible or not okay first let's see what is the determinant of this matrix. So this determinant of this matrix uh, determinant of this matrix minus 3 plus 8 which is 5. Okay. So determinant is 5 which is non-zero. The matrix is invertible and its inverse is given by this. Right. That you know how to find using your uh, cofactor minor and so on, right? So the inverse of the matrix that is we have from the coefficients is this. So this A is invertible and its inverse is this. And what is the theorem saying? Once if A is invertible, you find HK, which are A inverse of B1, B2. In this case, what is B1? B1 is 1. What is B2? B2 is minus 6. So what is A inverse of 1 comma minus 6? A inverse is already something you have computed. So once you have computed A inverse, you apply it on 1 comma minus 6, you will get HK and in this case it's minus 3 and minus 2. So now what do you do after finding HK? You write down a new to introduce the chain, I mean new time, I mean new introduce the where you do uh, W is X plus H and z is y plus k in this case in this case h is minus 3 and y is minus 2 so you use this transformation and rewrite this ODE in w and z variable okay so you use this in uh, transformation w z and rewrite and you will get an ODE in W and Z variable. Okay, and this should be a this you can verify it's a homogeneous ODE, right? Because if you take T 
both are of I mean, homogeneous of same degree. Right, which is one. The degree is one. Okay, so now let's so homogeneous. Let's try solving it. So what did we have to do for homogeneous? If you remember, when where we had we we look for we do the change of variable y over x in a homogeneous. In this case, uh, it is z over w. Okay, because z over z and w are the variables so you you do a z over w transformation so let's call that zeta okay so you have this ode which is homogeneous you do it this is homogeneous you do a transformation which is zeta which is z over w and if you do this transformation your ode will become this and it should um, uh, it and this homogeneous should become a separable in w and zeta variable Okay, so you see it becomes separable in W and zeta variable. The W variable here is zeta variable here. Now you integrate because it's separable ODU, you, you integrate, and this side is this, and this side is this. There's some constant. Okay, so on integration, you get this. So you now you have solved this uh, separable ODE in W and zeta variable. You have to write finally in terms of x and y variable so first you go to the z and w variable so equivalently this is the solution okay so this when you okay all this i'm just simplifying everything so finally this is the solution that you have which is in zeta and w variable okay please verify these things these things you know so the only thing that i've used here is integral of this integral of this is this okay so compute that okay that's a good exercise to do if you don't know okay so now we go back we can kind of retrace the steps that we followed so now from w and zeta variable we move to w and z variable so your solution in terms of w and z variable is this now you go back to x and y variable so you have the family of solutions in the x and y variable so you have solved a uh, ode with one degree polynomial coefficients right and in this case the matrix that you wrote down was invertible so it got converted into a homogeneous ode which you converted back again so, so then which we converted into separable again and solved it and finally we have solved the given OB. Okay. Now, now let's do another example for the second case. So take this ODE, okay, which is an again an ODE of one degree polynomials. Now what are the determinant of the matrix that is here? 1, 2, 2, 4. You can already see that they are linearly independent columns, right? two times of this is this so the determinant has to be zero in any case you can see that the determinant is zero four minus four is zero okay so the determinant is zero so the matrix is not invertible so if the matrix is not invertible what was the technique you just we just said you look at the coefficient of x and you take that this as a z variable sorry so you take uh, this as the z variable expressed to y. If you do this, then you will, you are going to get an ODE in z and x variable. Okay, so this ODE rewritten will become this, which if you simplify further, you are going to get in the differential form this ODE. Now this is a separable form so there's an x variable here and there all z variable here so this od is already in the separable form you solve it so you integrate you are going to get uh, 7x z square minus z equal to c which is the family of solutions in z and x variable now you write it back again using this in x and y variable so you get uh, this family of solution 
for the given OB. Okay, so you see we have seen various cases of uh, first order differential equations for which we can find closed form solutions. And more or less, if you see here, it I mean we started with separable and then every other OD was reduced under some transformation or something to, to a known case and then we solved it. Okay. So this completes uh, this week's uh, lecture. Thanks a lot. See you next week.